Welcome to Southeast Ohio Solar Haven once again. And guess what? Today we're going to give a little bit of a, I don't know, it might be a <clears throat> lesson, class, or something on the supercapacitors. Um, right here, this is a 58 farad capacitor bank. Uh, 12 volt bank it can be charged up to 16.2 volt however we're not going to use the full capability of this because most devices that we use in the solar world doesn't go that high in voltage or can't handle that higher voltage most of the time you're 15 14.8 volt somewhere around there and to give you an idea <clears throat> about when I say farad, a farad is one column of energy at one volt. That's the storage. So it stores one coulomb, however you say it, at one volt, which technically is a lot of energy. So when you start adding up the voltage plus the farads, you get a lot of coulombs of energy. There's a bunch of joules involved too. <sighs> I could tell you all about the math and everything, but that would turn into a long explanation. But what we need to know is, how long do these actually store energy for? <clears throat> uh, another thing that you need to know about is capacitors in general, super capacitors for one. They can uh, help with... DC voltage spikes and ripples and the bigger the capacitor it, it, it can help actually even out those voltage spikes and ripples and even voltage drops you know you could turn something on the voltage might be say 13.6 volt <coughs> excuse me and if you didn't have a capacitor in line, that voltage drop might say you was at 13.6, you turn something on that draws a little current, it might drop down to 12.8, and might come back up, it might sag your batteries down or whatever. Well, the capacitor is in line there to help with surge, spikes, ripples. And so what happens is these capacitors, they dump their energy as quickly as possible. So what happens is you might turn that device on it, you have 13.6 volts on, and the voltage might only drop to 13.4, 13.5, or you might not even have a voltage drop because this capacitor or any other capacitor will have held the energy that's needed to take care of that spike, ripple, or voltage drop. And so the larger the bank, the better it is for capacitive storage. And, and that's just that's the way. As far as I know, when it comes to capacitors, that's what I've learned in my schooling in electronics. Um, the largest capacitor that I know of with some research that I have done is 80,000 farad. Now at what voltage I don't know but 80,000 farads is insanity. That's probably if it was a high voltage capacitor it would kill you. Uh, it would probably zap body parts off of you. I don't I have no clue. <laughs> I know that even these little banks and even the bigger banks I have will create a lot of energy. Well, they don't create. They store a lot of energy. Let's get that right. They store a lot of energy, and when released, they release it so quickly, it is a spark of doom. Uh, they use these types of capacitors in... Buses, I remember, if I remember right, they were using in buses as an experiment, the capacitors for regenerative braking. Uh, a lot of people use them in the car audio industry, especially in the car audio world where we got these systems that are capable of 
producing upwards to a hundred thousand watts of audio power and uh, you know you can only put so many alternators on your car so they use these capacitors to store the extra energy they need for when uh, they go to in line for competition to do their thing and they want tons of audio power to be as loud as possible as they can be so that's where you get your boom cars you hear these boom cars well you know it's a great hobby I do it too so uh, capacitors help in that world um, but yeah I, I set up a little test for everybody here because I was questioned as can I use capacitors for a battery bank and my answer is going to be kind of side, you know, dual sided. Yes, you can, and no, you can't. Yes, if you can afford to buy them, because even these little ones can cost anywhere between five to fifteen dollars a piece. And when you get into the bigger capacitors, which are three thousand farads, you know, a lot of them that are used in the car audio industry, three thousand farad each, and you uh, put them in series to raise your voltage because most of these capacitors are 2.7 to 3 volt capacitors. So you have to have them in series, not parallel, series. Because once you do it in series, you might this, these are 350 farads a piece, but you must divide it by 6 to get your Farad capacity, which is makes it 58, 58.3, I think it is for this. So, and when you got the larger capacitors, which are 3,000 farad, of course you have six in series for 12 volt, which the max voltage is usually around 16. Um, you have 500 farads, and I've seen vehicles that has as many as 20 to 30 banks of capacitors in them to meet their power requirements so and it's a pretty big deal in the audio industry uh, for solar basically we don't need a lot because what we're trying to do like on our charge controllers over here you know what we're trying to do here is suffice from the surges from our battery banks you know we're trying to if we have a compressor a refrigerator or something that or air conditioner it just takes that instant surge to start up and it drops back down well we don't want it to keep surging the batteries because it could actually do something to the battery plates or destroy a battery if the battery isn't ready for that type of current surge so we use capacitors to even out that ripple or that surge or the, a, a voltage drop or anything. So you could use them for battery storage, but you're going to need many of them. Uh, even if you build a bank that was capable of two or three kilowatt hours of storage, you would need well over a thousand because you can't use the full capaci storage capacity because you know your power inverter or something you don't want to drop below a certain voltage so you're only still going to be good between say 12 volt and 14.8 to be on the safe side so you technically are only going to be able to use maybe 20 to 40 percent of that power as a battery out of a capacitor so still it's it's not as good as uh, lithium technology. I have to admit that lithium technology is pretty good. I mean, you can use it 80% of the battery and it won't affect it. Unlike lead acid, you know, 40 or 50% usage and uh, you're kind of iffy at that kind of point. But the question that turned was, can I use it as a battery once again? I'm gonna say this, keep saying this over apparently. What I done was I hooked up this 12 volt capacitor 
to a 300 watt Ames pure sine wave inverter to a 60 watt fan I got hanging up here on my ceiling that blows on my midnight charge controllers and I'll disconnect it from I'm, I'm using a NOCO Genius battery charger on power supply mode which is 13.6 volt I didn't charge it above 13.6 because most of the time our batteries if we're running a solar system are going to settle around the 12.8 12.9 volt you know if our batteries are good and we want to kind of keep it real you know kind of keep it in a real voltage aspect so what I'll do is I'll disconnect this this is connected to a fan it's 60 watt rated and I'll turn my uh, voltage meter on here that way you'll be able to see the voltage we're at 13.6 it, it, right on the nose in fact and now I'll disconnect this I'll go ahead and turn no wait we won't turn this on we'll go ahead and disconnect this off the negative negative. and as you see the voltage there it stays the same now we'll go ahead and turn this power inverter on and it's going to start running this fan. I know you're not going to hear it, but you can see the voltage drop on it. And, you know, keep an eye on the time. This is 58 farads. And eventually the power inverter will probably shut off around the 10 volt range or whatever. But, you know, this gives you an idea of how long a capacitor will last. This is 58 farads. So you'd multiply, say, if it lasts a minute. You know, right now we're dipping down in 12.2. I'm going to go ahead and let it go until it shuts off. Or until the inverter shuts off. And you can sit there and see the voltages and everything. But this gives you an idea how long will it run. Or, or can it run. It can run it. It's a small bank. It's run on a 60 watt fan. Voltage is dipping pretty quick. You know, I'm, I am using a small bank of capacitors, but it does run it. I suspect this thing here will start to, uh, the power inverter will start beeping here in just a second. Yep. Well, it sounds like my big inverter kicked in. Well, let's see here. Oh, wow and it got below 10 volt and it's going to shut off let's see when it shuts off here let's go for the gusto and that's when she shut off about 9.4 9.5 volt so i'm going to go ahead and shut that off and now as you see it doesn't have a it's capacitors are not even like a battery uh, once it gets below that certain voltage, it stays there. Uh, the only way to really bring it back up to charge is to connect it back up and create a few sparkies, maybe. Yeah, just a. Oh, sparks! Yes, we like sparks. It's blow it up. No, we won't. Oh, this is fun. All right, you little bugger, get on there. Well, they don't like me for right now. Well, here we go. Now it's charging back up. But as you see, they charge back up tremendously quicker than they were discharged. And that's the greatest thing about capacitors. They charge back up fairly quick. Um, when they take the uh, surge of uh, extra current to charge fairly quick and they're you know they're right back up to snuff but uh yeah that's, i wanted to show you guys this today because i've been having a lot of questions about it and kind of like why do i use them and what you know how would they work as a battery bank well you know like i said they would work as a battery bank but you probably got to have a few thousand of them i'm not going to lie it takes a lot of capacitors 
I've seen people use them in the car audio industry once again. You know, I've seen big banks where, you know, they can run their car, but they don't run it for a very long period of time. But, yeah, I hope you guys uh, got something from that experiment there. I wanted to show you all uh, how it works, what won't work, and um, everything there about them. Um, this was the capacitor bank I put together in one of my other videos for you and, and you know, showed y'all so it's a working capacitor bank as you see and so uh, charge back up to 13.5 13.59 well 13.6 and once again you know I'll take it off here for you and turn a fan on switch it on you'll see like an initial drop when it starts up and the fans on it's running and, and that's how the capacitor works uh, now if this was like a let's say a little 5 watt LED it would probably last a good 5-10 minutes but when you're putting them under a heavier load this is a 60 watt fan like I said it's running a 300 watt power inverter and uh you see how it works there and how everything is running on there. But, you know, the more you have, the longer they last. So, and if that answers any of your questions about battery storage, capacitors for battery storage, or anything like that, I, I, I hope that was informational for you. And it helps you out in your endeavors in the solar at world anyway so anyway I hope y'all have a good day like I said stay inside once again uh, that way we don't spread this coronavirus around and stay safe and uh, I hope you have a good solar day it, it, it turned off this time so I'll go ahead and turn it off and uh, you know here to here at Solar Haven today, we're running off-grid once again. We, uh, here at, uh, this is, uh, let's see, not even noon yet. Today we're going to have a, another epic day here because we've got 2.9 kilowatt and 2.6 kilowatt already um, came in today on the midnight charge controllers and we started a little bit earlier on our off-grid episode so we wanted to see how much power we were actually doing off-grid so have a good day people remember right down there in that corner click like and subscribe hey look at that it blurred out <laughs> click like and subscribe down there yes that's it click like and subscribe you know it won't hurt only a little bit to click like and subscribe down there and click that little bell icon just in case you want to get notifications of my videos. Um, also, have a great solar sunny day because, you know, if you're on solar, it's going to be awesome. So, in Ohio anyway. <laughs> so, I'm out of here once again. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching my channel. I hope you guys got a little bit of information today. If not, use it any which way you need. Thank you very much for watching. Later on, guys.